Hey everybody, Whitney Labrie here, and I thought today it would be really fun if we did a look back at our 2023 miniatures. I love a year-end recap for some reason. I don't know, I'm just that type of person. And then I thought that we would take a look at some of the 2024 goals that I have for miniatures. Starting off in January, I decided that I wanted to do something magical, and so I created a wardrobe based after one of my absolute favorite books of all time, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is part of the Chronicles of Narnia collection by C.S. Lewis. So this was the light up wardrobe that I did. In February, I decided to start off the month with a little bit of baking, and we did the comparison between polymer clay and air dry clay, and we made these little tiny raspberry bunk cakes. I can't believe now that it's been a little over a year that I've been working with polymer clay, but I'm still pretty new, still learning, and so that was a really great experience. And I have to say, I loved the air dry just fine, but really, gosh, you can do so much with that polymer clay, especially when it comes to a realistic look. Then for Mardi Gras, I made these little tiny masks, and I thought they turned out really, really cute. I think that this was one of those projects that could easily be taken from this as a first time or a beginner process, and then really take it to the next level and do some beautiful beading and that sort of thing. From there in February, I did actually start the Wizard of Oz room. So I, it was the very first room that I did in the huge, big 15-room dollhouse. I did channel my inner Dorothy Gale. And of course, we took the dollar store furniture and made them over, making each piece a representation of one of the characters of the Wizard of Oz. Here we have the yellow brick road carpeting from a piece of felt and a little bit of paint. And then here's the overall room and all the really fun details. All right, March. Still wanting to learn more about polymer clay and using it for making food. I did a cottage pie or shepherd's pie, depending on the type of meat that you want to use, and created some meals, some Irish meals, and then also included a prep board that had some potatoes and vegetables, a little knife, and of course a, a rag. All right, and then in the same month, I began and started the what we do in the shadows room. I got to pretend to be nausea for just a little bit, and then we did turn the one room using the wallpaper that was already in there we went from just a bright red plain room with wood flooring to a complete transformation into a what we do in the shadows dining room that was also my first experience making a doll and I did go with the tiny nausea doll as my very first one in hopes that maybe I'll get courageous enough to do a, a little bit better sculpting coming in 2024. So then we headed into April. April, what a great month. And I decided to hop into a trash to treasure transformation where I took this broken side-by-side -side here and turn it into a little Easter side-by-side -side for the garden. And I, I really loved this project. It was one of those great pieces that allowed me to use leftover items or odds and ends in my garden box. And I just really enjoyed creating this weather wooden piece with all of this dried leaves and little eggs and all sorts of other fun stuff. Loved it, loved it, loved it. That inspired me to do another transformation piece by buying these Hobby Lobby items here that you can just buy basically over the counter, right? And then did a little bit of a customization to transform these pieces into items that were one of a kind for me and hopefully inspire you to also do that and just, you know, take your little over the counter items and make them your very own. From there, we headed into May, uh, Mother's Day. I did take my mom's little painting that she had done, and then I turned it into a replica room box for her. And this was a really fun thing for me to create because I also used the Calico Critter line, the little rabbits. This was my first room box that I created for non-people. <laughs> and I really enjoyed this process while also creating a video on how 
how to do tape wiring, which I hope was helpful to those of you who watched it. Moving from there, we're heading right into summer. And so I did create this summer sizzling barbecue video where we took a stock grill and made it look as though it was well loved and used. And then we did make shish kebabs, steak, and we also made some tongs and just rusted up the base of that a little bit again, just to make it look like it was a well-loved grill. That was a really fun episode. And then from there in the same month, we jumped on over to an abandoned dollhouse that I found and we did a little ghost hunting with Tiny Whitney and we did turn a broken piano into an abandoned piano with the use of Fuller's clay. And that was a really fun project. I enjoyed creating that abandoned look. I probably will do some of that again in the future. That was just so fun to do and, and create. And then June came along and I did one of my favorite projects of 2023, which was the Indiana Jones Adventure Room and Office. It was such a blast for me to create some of the most famous settings in the movie from Raiders of the Lost Art, where he gets the fertility god and finds the Ark of the Covenant to getting the Shankara stones in Temple of Doom. And then of course, finding the Cup of Christ in Jordan. And so those were just some great settings to recreate. Very challenging in a different way for me. I really kind of pushed myself in doing more of a diorama, which was something that I hadn't ever really done before. Loved it so much, learned so much through that process. And then of course I did create the 112 office with all of the different artifacts from the movie. And then we did create a secret passage behind the fireplace that did lead into the adventure room. Such a fun thing. And again, like I said, I just really learned a lot from that. In July, I decided to take a few weeks off. Uh, for those who followed me for some time, you might remember that I got quite discouraged just in general. Not with miniatures, of course. Still had a lot of passion for miniatures in July, but I wasn't so passionate about YouTube. But I do wanna thank everybody who reached out to me, both through YouTube and personally, to just say, hey, Whitney, we want you to keep going. We encourage you to keep going. And so um, that's ultimately, of course, what I did. But I just did take a little bit of a breather, and I also got a another job <laughs> so it was um, quite an interesting time uh, mid-year of course sometimes we have to reevaluate and pivot in directions that are for the best so that's what I did in July going into the last of the summer months into August I did start thinking more about the fair and the carnival and we started creating several different types of looks using the little plastic cubes that a lot of miniatures come in. And so we did make a Zoltar machine, which was one of my favorite projects of the cube projects was that Zoltar machine, loved it so much. But I did really enjoy also creating the funnel cakes, the cotton candy stand, the pretzel machine. That might've been, that was one of those things I had envisioned for a long time before making it was so, it was, so, it was super fun to bring it to life. And then of course the corn dog stand with all of the handmade corn dogs. That was super fun too. In particular, of course, the one with the little bite out of it. And then a not so popular video, but actually one of my favorite machines that I used that I made those cubes out of it was my mini brands claw machine. And I just really enjoyed making that because it was just a super fun way to display some of the mini brands that I have uh, collected or been given over the year. So as September rolled around, I started, of course, thinking of, you know, spooky season, but I had been commissioned to build a dollhouse for a magician. And so a lot of the time spent was on that house, just cleaning it for him and getting it exactly right for his show and making sure that the lighting was correct. And so that came with its own set of challenges. And also this was the first real good toys dollhouse that I had built. And so that was quite a learning curve as well. But I realized that I love real good toys dollhouses because they are just so beefy. They're so well made. And those are going to be dollhouses that will last a long time and become heirloom pieces. From there, I started to ease into the spooky season and we did tea for boo where we created our little kettle with steam that had 
the little ghosts in it and a tiny window setting for that to go into that was kind of very reminiscent of a, a witch's corner or a witch's window with herbs and spices that could be used for potions and maybe a little spell book and stuff like that. So I really loved that project. Fun to do, quick and easy. And then we moved on to October, which I called Ock Poulter, of course, because it was all about poltergeist and recreating the children's room for poltergeist. With that, we did the full room. We did Robbie's side of the room. We did Carol Ann's side of the room. We did all of the toys, the posters, the bedding. We created a spooky closet. And then of course we created the tree, which I'm still not satisfied with. And maybe this year I will re redo that. And also Robbie's clown was part of that entire process. I overall loved the way that that room came out. I was not as satisfied with the scary elements of it. And to be fair, I felt like I rushed myself and so you know moving forward I think when I feel that way I would rather just slow down take a deep breath make sure it's done right to try to make sure that I'm always giving you guys the best quality content that I can and then once that project was completed we did get into the Thanksgiving season the grateful season and I decided that we were gonna get cheesy and I did make the cheese hutch the distress hutch with all the different cheeses another one of my favorite projects of the year. I loved all the color and going back into the Garfield dollhouse, which is the kitchen that you're seeing here and just recreating and upgrading a, a piece of furniture that I had already had, a space I'd already had and just added this in its place. And I just really think it added a lot of character and charm to the kitchen. From there, I decided to get into the holiday spirit and really start thinking about Christmas. And we did do a couple holiday centerpieces, the traditional red and green. I did create a beach Christmas centerpiece and then of course I did do a fall centerpiece because we were still in November at the time and I think the fall one might have been my actual favorite <laughs> centerpiece although I did love a lot of the elements of the Christmas ones as well. Once December came we were in full bloom and I did start off with some tiny houses. I turned a Trader Joe's grocery bag into a miniature Christmas village that was set up in my front living room and then I was so into houses that I decided to do a couple more small houses, even smaller, this time recreating the very vintage but absolutely charming putts houses and a little miniature scene to go on a fireplace that was going to be used in a Christmas box for another episode. What did the other episode wind up being? Well, it was a pack away miniature room box based on one of my favorite Christmas movies, A Christmas Story, that featured not only the leg lamp, uh, we, we made the Fragili crate, we created the Red Rider BB gun box and BBs. We made a Zeppelin for Randy. And then, of course, my friend Leslie at Will and Row Arts created one of my most favorite dolls, the Ralphie doll that is wearing the very famous, the infamous pink bunny suit known as the Pink Nightmare. And I thought that that was a honestly perfect way to end the holiday season. Now for 2024, what do I have in store for you? Well, I am definitely going to be working on the big 15 room dollhouse. We have completed three rooms. We have plenty more to go. Of course, as I had teased in the very last episode of the Indiana Jones videos, I would be working on the Back to the Future garage, which I am still in the process of doing. We are going to do that for 2024. No doubt there. Willy Wonka. So this was a room that I kind of talked about maybe doing in 2023, but time has run out, obviously. And so I will be heading back and doing a Willy Wonka room. It will most likely be the master bedroom for the dollhouse that will be Willy Wonka themed. I have some really fun ideas for that and I cannot wait to share that with you. And then the last room in the attic will be the center room and it will definitely be Goonies inspired attic and I cannot wait to show you that. Other projects that I want to do, I will be working on a vintage radio here and we'll be turning this into a room box and it will be inspired by the set of the movie Asteroid City. If 
you have seen that. They did use quite a bit of miniatures in that movie, but the set itself is very mid-century modern. I love that look very much, and so this room box will be highly inspired by that, but also very inspired by, by one of my very favorite artists, El Gato Gomez. If you're not familiar with her art, she does these really amazing mid-century paintings with a atomic edge to them, a very scientific edge to them, a lot of robots, aliens. Honestly, it's everything that I love in a painting and I just love her work so much. And, and then in addition, we will be, of course, heading back into the Garfield Dollhouse for other mini projects just along the way. And for those of you who watched the Ultimate Dollhouse Tour Part 1, I am going to be doing another Ultimate Dollhouse Part 2, which will include the whole garden because the other video, I hadn't done that yet. And I will kind of tweak the video itself so that I'm not really in it doing a project per se. It'll just be about the dollhouse itself and the garden itself. So a lot going on for 2024, you guys. It's gonna be another really fun year. I hope that the things that you get out of my channel are just that we have a great time, that I inspire you to get back to the miniatures that you love so much, or that you might be inspired to do minis for the first time if you haven't ever done it before, but you're really nervous about it. So it's gonna be great. I love it so much. I hope you share the same passion. And if if you don't, I just hope that you enjoy the channel, maybe just for full entertainment purposes. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed looking back on 2023. I hope that you are absolutely looking forward to 2024. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so so you don't miss any of the future videos coming your way. Thank you so much. You guys have a great week and I'll see you next time. 